the crowd of philosophy. Now the Bible has a very interesting way of getting this tiny little detail that makes the emotion very vivid. For instance, it says in the text, they return to the grave and they ground their teeth. That's the and later on it says they covered their ears. That's because they the body That angry crowd grabbed some stones from the ground around them and threw them at that helpless demon. And while they were intent on converting murder Stephen a vision of Jesus in heaven. And he prayed for that God who did his attackers a prayer that was very reminiscent of Jesus' words from the cross. But what made it so mad? What was behind the anger of the crowd? Well, first of all, they were afraid. Anger is often the face of fear. And these Jews felt threatened. The Christian community began to grow, and the establishment began to realize how powerful the disciples' witness had become. Thus, in fear, the established religious leaders began to seriously resist the rise of the Christian community. And secondly, the Christian community had begun to challenge some of the core values of the, Christian, of the Jewish faith. The claim that Jesus was the promised Messiah upended the entire religious system, which was based upon obedience to laws, dietary restrictions, and purity rules. Jesus routinely asked his followers to move beyond mere legalism to a genuine love and acceptance of others. And then there was the issue of their closed hearts and ears. They had long rejected the prophets of God and refused to respond to the prompting of the spirits. And so when Stephen said, you have become betrayers and murderers, you have killed the righteous one, it was more than they could bear to be. Perhaps deep down they knew that Stephen was telling the truth about Jesus. And as they say, the truth hurts. But Stephen is more than just an isolated story in one the story of his hope had a source of great courage. He was perfectly willing to risk his life to claim Jesus as the promised one of the Messiah. And his bravery encouraged Jesus' disciples. And they began to gather together on a regular basis, devoting themselves to the teachings of they welcomed. Um, they accepted an Ethiopian beauty. And Cornelius, the Roman official, they even accepted a man named Saul. And stood by and proved it as the stones flew at Stephen. And after this conversion, Saul, the persecutor of the church, became Paul, the leading evangelist and theologian of that Christian church. But here's the thing over and over again, the church has confronted these questions about who to include and who to leave out. And then you can think of some ways that we as followers of Jesus continue to struggle with these questions. Who gets welcomed among us? Who isn't wanted in our community? Whom do we tolerate with certain limitations or caveats? How open are we to the promptings of the Holy Spirit? Is it so that our men has become a bit stiff as well? <clears throat> but the story of Stephen is about more than welcoming folks that show up at the door. It's also about proclaiming the evil, even when it's risky to do so. <clears throat> The story of Stephen's martyrdom is a call to us to bravely proclaim Jesus. And that's a hard one for we sophisticated and civilized Lutherans who for a long time have been taught not to wear our religion on its feet. I remember when I first started ministry, I received in the name of Package Evangelism program that purported to teach people how to evangelize the neighborhood. We were to go door to door and start to visit with this question. If you were to die tomorrow, where would you spend eternity? It's called sledgehammer evangelism. And so it's through fear and guilt. That kind of evangelism does not respect the dignity of other people. And yet too often we may, like churches, go to the other extreme. That is, we refuse even to say the name of Jesus in public. It's as though we are ashamed of our Savior's name. And yet our faith is about Jesus, and he embodies our hope now and forever. So now we're at the audience participation part of the search. It's an exercise for you. Together, let's say that name Jesus so we get a little more comfortable with it. 
Jesus. Jesus. Thank you. 